Hey, Walter Sorrell's back with another Knife Makers Friday Five. Today, we're gonna to be talking about some things going on in the channel and your questions. Hey, Walter Sorrell's back with another Knife Makers Friday Five. Hey, so we got a whole bunch of things going on today. For those of you who haven't caught my Friday Fives before in the past, basically they're kind of a mishmash of a whole bunch of things. Uh, we're talking about uh, things that are going on with the channel, uh, maybe some knives that I'm making, uh, and I'll always, well, most of the time anyway, I try and answer some viewer questions. So I got a couple of those that'll come up at the end. All right, so first thing to mention, uh, I was at the Blade Show. Uh, it was really great meeting a lot of you guys. Whole bunch of folks came by the Ameribraid booth where I was kind of hanging out most of the time. Also Pops, uh, I was over there. Saw a whole bunch of you guys and I really appreciate your stopping by and saying hi. So here are a few quick clips of the Blade Show. Uh, ground in with, by a 12 inch wheel. But for $475. Neil, Jason, Trollski. Just saw a bunch of cool people there. If you haven't made it to Blade Show in the past, you got to do it. It's really, really fun. A lot of great people, a lot of great knowledge there. Uh, an upcoming event, I will be at uh, Billy Salyer's uh, Yellow Rose Forge, I believe on the 15th of uh, July. That's a great event. Uh, he actually has been having it in the past at his home shop, but this year he's going to be doing it at the Tryon Equestrian Center, which is maybe an hour south of uh, Asheville, maybe, maybe not even that. It's a really cool uh, facility, obviously, uh, you know, mainly for horses, but a um, lot of event space and he's expecting a whole lot of people to be there. I'm going to be doing a cutting demonstration with the Japanese sword. So if you have a chance, come by and see that. And, you know, I, I mentioned uh, Billy, but, uh, but also his son Jojo is now uh, an accomplished uh, knife maker and he'll be there too. So come out and say hi if you get the chance. It's really an excellent event. So uh, recently I've been kind of cogitating about uh, belt grinders, specifically reasonably priced, maybe even you might say cheap belt grinders. You know, I think for a lot of guys, getting that first belt grinder is sort of the, you know, the first obstacle to getting started as a knife maker. So I'm trying to go out and test a whole bunch of super budget type belt grinders. A couple weeks ago, I did one about the Harbor Freight one by 30. That's probably the cheapest belt grinder anybody could get. Uh, I did make a knife. I've got one going here that I was working on uh, that I made entirely with a, uh, I mean, by the time it's done anyway, it'll be done entirely with that super, super cheap uh, belt grinder. So uh, anyway, watch for some more upcoming ones. I'm going to be doing one about a one by 42 pretty soon. And then I've got uh, another fairly cheap two by 72 uh, coming up from Vivor. Uh, probably be three, four weeks before I get that one done. Also, I am, you can see all these little things sitting here, these little pieces of MDF. I'm working on a vacuum table for making sheaths. I've always used a press to do sheaths in the past, but I think that a vacuum table is gonna allow me to do some pretty cool things that I couldn't do before. Basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have the whole thing set up on my CNC machine so that, um, you know, I can do the vacuum forming and then drill the holes and cut the outline of the sheath while it's still sitting there on the CNC machine. This whole thing may not work at all. It may be a really dumb idea. I've never seen anybody do it this way, but I want to try it because if it works, it'll be by far the most efficient way that you can make a holster, you know, that somebody working at the sort of scale that I do uh, could do anyway. So um, keep an eye out for that. If that doesn't show up, it means that the whole experiment failed, but uh, hopefully it's gonna work and I'm pretty excited about it. So another quick thing to mention, if you like what we're doing here on the channel and you wanna help out, um, you can do so at Patreon. Uh, it's a great way to support, not just me obviously, but a lot of other uh, makers and you know, folks who do videos or music or whatever. So I've never really talked about this, uh, 
Uh, but there's a guy named John Saunders who has a channel called uh, NYCCNC on, um, on YouTube. I watched innumerable videos of his back when I got that machine, uh, my CNC machine, and um, I would not be able to use that machine if it weren't for all the videos that I watched of John Saunders. And uh, one day I realized, you know, I'd been doing Patreon for myself for a while, and I was like, I know John's on Patreon, and I've never supported him that way, uh, and I should, because, I mean, literally the information that he's um, given to me through YouTube totally changed, you know, basically how I made knives. Uh, it was a complete game changer, and there was just nobody on YouTube like that guy. So anyway, um, I still give him 10 bucks every month. Anyway, uh, if you want to support the channel, patreon.com slash Walter Sorrels. Okay, so one more thing before we go on to the viewer questions, uh, and I'm gonna try and do this reasonably quickly, but um, you know, there's some guys who on social media, basically all they do is sell knives. That's not really my MO. I try to give you guys stuff that's useful for you, but every now and then I sort of start to pile up knives uh, that frankly, I just wanna get out into other people's hands. They're not doing me any good, they're just sitting around here, so uh, I just wanna kinda get rid of them. So uh, I'm gonna be having a flash sale this weekend. Basically all the little knives that are sitting right here, uh, I'm gonna be selling uh, for various discounts. Let me just show you real quickly what I've got sitting here. Uh, I've got some Tactics Armory knives, this is an operator. I am gonna probably be phasing this particular design out, and this is very possibly the last one of these I'll ever make, so um, I'm not, not making any promises about that, but anyway, if you're interested in that just as a keepsake or uh, whatever, <clears throat> there it is. Um, I think I'll be taking 50 bucks off of the regular price of that. You know, just as a general note about my Tactics Armory things, I went through a period where I had a whole bunch of new designs, and then I started working on this right here, my folder, and I spent really about two years working on folders. So anyway, you know, basically I figured out that I couldn't make this at a price point that made sense to me. Um, and at a quality, you know, the sort of intersection of quality and price that I was looking for. So, you know, basically most of you who have been watching me for a while know that I moved into this new shop last year and that really ate up a good portion of last year. So anyway, the bottom line is that I've come to a point where I am ready to refresh the whole um, line of Tactics Armory knives. So basically I want to kind of blow some of these things out of inventory and start doing a whole new set of stuff. So uh, this right here is the Bushido. I, I really like this one. I may keep this particular design. It's kind of expensive to make. Um, I'll be knocking $100 off of this one. I've got a couple of them in stock. Um, the original design was inspired by a guy named John Donaher, who is uh, one of the most famous jiu-jitsu um, trainers in the country. Uh, trains a lot of MMA guys. Uh, really interesting guy, you know, just aside from his jujitsu life. So anyway, he commissioned just uh, you know a regular custom knife, and this kind of is the production version of that knife. Another one here is the ZP01, which is really a, a collab. Uh, the the design was basically made by a couple friends of mine, um, Zach Touchstone and uh, Peter Renwick. Uh, Peter actually designed another one of my knives a long time ago, or we sort of co-designed it. Anyway. Zach and, um, and Peter sort of had a, a philosophy of how to use this. This is designed definitely as a self-defense blade. And, uh, you know, it's got a very pointy little tip on here. It's not made for prying uh, tops off of paint cans. Um, it's got an ingenious little carry system. Uh, you know, it's made so you can use it in several different grips. Uh, very cool knife. And uh, I've got a bunch of those in stock, so I'm gonna knock, I don't know, 75 bucks off of that one or something like that. So all of that is tacticsarmory.com. All of those will be discounted for 48 hours. Okay, so turning over here, you know, if you've got a uh, birthday for 
a wife or a mother or something coming up or you, you love to cook or whatever. I got a couple of kitchen knives here. This was a forged integral bolster. Uh, I think this is a super cool knife. I forget, I think this is curly cherry, but it may be curly maple. Big old brawny kitchen knife, really cool knife. That was one of my Pops Project of the Month knives. Uh, this one I did, this could be six or eight months ago that I did this one. A buddy of mine commissioned something from me about every three, four years, and he wanted a knife that had a textured uh, finish so that it looked like it was hand forged, but it's stainless so he could use it in the kitchen and it wasn't going to get all stained up on him. So I did three knives for that particular video. Uh, again, you can go back and find this knife and a couple others uh, that I did for that demonstration. Both of these knives here, you know, a lot of the times I sell these little demo knives off of videos and I view them kind of as keepsakes or whatever because they're not really finished, finished knives. They have, you know, a little ding here, whatever, because um, they're just demonstrations. These, however, are really kind of finished knives. So um, the prices are a little higher than those ones that I typically um, do as, as demo knives, but uh, still, I do want to put these in somebody's hands, so I'm going to knock, you know, 100 bucks off of whatever it is that I'm asking for those on the website. These will be actually, I think, on waltersorrelsblades.com. So check Tactics Armory and waltersorrelsblades.com. These knives may be on both of those. Now, these last two knives will definitely just be on Walter Sorrels Blades. That's my Japanese sword website. So uh, if you came and uh, saw me at the Blade Show, this was on display there at the Ameribrade booth where I was hanging out. It was on a little rotating stand. Very cool setup that the Ameribrade guys had there, uh, if you got a chance to see it. There were a bunch of really great makers there, and everybody had really cool stuff on display. So this is one of them. Whatever this is going for, I'll knock $100 off of it, let's say. Uh, same deal with this. I actually took this to the blade show, but I didn't end up uh, displaying it. The longer one is mono steel, I think 1095, and this is folded steel, 1050 and 1095. So this one is actually a little bit more expensive because it's folded, but the, these are both you know, made in reasonably traditional manners. They're hand forged, um, water quenched, uh, they've got hamones and all that stuff. So check these out on waltersorrelsblades.com. All right, let's wrap things up with what most of you probably came here for, which is viewer questions. So the first question is from Llewellyn Pitzer. He said, uh, can you tell me where I can find detailed plans on the internet on how to build a forging press? So. Uh, if you're familiar with the Batson hammer-in that's held every year at the Alabama Forge Council, fantastic event, by the way, happens every year. If you get a chance, definitely go. Um, that event is named after Dr. James Batson, who wrote the book that I'm going to tell you about. Uh, Jim uh, was, you know, many, many years involved in, in knife making, um, influenced a lot of people. Um, so anyway, among the ways he influenced people was writing this book, which is called Build Your Own Hydraulic Forge Press. I bought a copy of it many years ago. It'll give you every bolt, every nut, everything that you need to do with some really good explanations of how hydraulics works too. Um, terrific book, highly recommend it. If you're going to build a hydraulic forge press, that's where I'd start. Okay, last question. Um, What's the best kind of belts to sharpen S30V on the work sharp with blade grinding attachment? Um, so Tim uh, bought one of my, I do some DIY blades. So they're basically tactics armory blades, just the same standard blades that I use for, my, um, for the knives that I sell, but you can just buy the blade itself and uh, make your own handle for it. And so he'd done that and now he's trying to sharpen it. I always put a little bit of an edge on them, but they're not sharpened to the point of being sharp. I just sort of put a little micro bevel there that you can finish up uh, after you make the knife. Obviously, I don't want to put a real good edge on there because you'll cut the crap out of yourself when you're making a knife. 
Uh, so anyway, uh, Tim had bought one of those, and now he's kind of struggling trying to sharpen S30V. S30V's got vanadium in it, and you know, pretty hard stuff. So anyway, here's the basic message I would give you about sharpening. Anytime I'm sharpening with belts, I always start with 120 grit ceramic for just roughing out that micro bevel. Ceramics cut really well, and most of the ceramic belts are X weight belts, which means they're very flat and very stable so that they don't put little smiles and cut all kinds of nasty wobbles and stuff into your uh, cutting edge. So if you have one of those work sharp systems and you can get ceramic belts, and there are ceramic belts available from um, Norton, you know, Norton makes the blaze, uh, 3M has them, um, Combat has the shredder, VSM, uh, Clean Sport, everybody makes them. So 120 grit is where I would start. Past that point, you know, what I go to after that are usually structured abrasives like um, Combat sells one that I think is actually manufactured by Sunpack. It's a very, very fine abrasive. Uh, I like that. Um, 3M has the uh, Micron belts. Uh, I like those. Um, but once you have that edge established with the 120 grit ceramic, everything gets easier after that. So that's, I guess, my general point. Final point about sharpening is if you really want a scary sharp edge, you're always, um, you know, advised to hone them uh, on a leather strop. Uh, and one final point is if you don't have um, a belt grinder or a work sharp that has that little belt system um, and you're, you're sh sharpening on stones, I would highly, highly, highly recommend that you use bonded diamond abrasives. Uh, Easy Lap, um, I think DMT, there may be some other, there, I know there's some Chinese ones available on, you know, like Amazon and stuff like that. Um, basically, it's just a little flat plate with diamonds on them. They cut really well. You can get the 1200 grit abrasives, extra fine, some of them call them. And those are great, great, great for doing that final edge. You know, there are people who want to go to 30,000 grit and all that kind of stuff. I think that's a waste of time. 1,200 grit for, you know, a standard EDC type knife or a kitchen knife, it'll do the trick, my opinion anyway. All right, well, thanks for stopping by. Uh, that'll do it for this week. Like I said, I will be in the next week or so, hopefully doing a, a video about this um, vacuum forming system for making sheaths. Um, if it works, the video will be out in the next week or so. If it doesn't work, we'll never see it. <clears throat> um, and also, I've got uh, videos about uh, budget belt grinders coming up, so keep your eyes peeled for those. I think that's really valuable for people who are just getting started and don't have the scratch to get in a Maribraid or a Bader, you know, uh, some of the top level pro type um, 2x72s. All right, guys, thanks for watching and keep on making those knives. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like what we're doing here, please subscribe and make sure that you click on that bell so you get notified of all the latest videos. Want to buy a knife from me? Check out my modern blades at tacticsarmory.com. Digging the channel? You can support our video making efforts on Patreon. You know, I've been banging away on these videos for like 10 years, so I hope you'll show some love for all that hard work. Link in the cards and descriptions. Finally, if you're interested in making Japanese swords, check out my full line of Japanese sword videos where I show how to forge Japanese swords as well as how to polish them and how to make fittings, handles, and scabbards. Walter Sorrel's Blades dot com.